let's move on to our big story tonight. And managing director of Engine Oil, Henry Akwabwa, is predicting further fuel hike as long as the CD continues to depreciate. He was speaking to my colleague Charles Aite following um, the uh, September 2nd window fuel price hikes. Meanwhile, some drivers have also been venting their spleen on government for the frequent pr uh, price increases prices across several petroleum pumps have indeed ignited some sense of concern, especially among commercial drivers and even private ones for that matter. We have been engaging some of these commercial drivers who say the cost of living and of course production in terms of their entire day-to-day -day routine has increased significantly due to this development. They say situations would have to be measured carefully if they indeed would have to survive these troubling times. There is an increment of fuel this morning. Uh, yeah. How is it going to affect you as a taxi driver? It's really affecting us because, you know, our work uh, uh, is negotiation. We, we, we that do a negotiation and uh, a short distance is between six cities and seven cities, but people prefer paying five cities while the fuel prices is still up. So it's a, it's a big challenge to us. The government to do a lot of subsidizing, you know, to put a lot of money into the fuel, you know. We, Ghana, we have at least, we have fuel in Ghana here, so we don't expect to be paying so much for fuel. Let the government do something about it and put a lot of money into it so that it will come down for us more. We can't even do this. We can't even take care of our family because the fuel is going high. At the end of the day, when you work, you use the money to buy fuel. You're not going to home. So it's very, very, we are facing different, 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 different problem in our work side. As a driver, how are you coping in the wake of this situation? Yes, now the way the things are happening, you, the end of the day, the money you got, you use it to buy fuel. So the end of the day, we have so many people in our houses. Now, the way the price, Uber cars are small cars, and then the fuel consumption is helping them. But we look at the car, this car here is for 1.8. What can I be using it? Uh, expensive fuels and uh, doing Uber. I can't use it for Uber, so I have to get Uber and use the small, small car so that at the end of the day, I can achieve something small for my family. Yeah, now money I left. Do that I don't know if it's seven city I left for my wife. Seven city, I, I go wake up, don't time, Hello. four o'clock. Therefore, I drop up to a new late, ten o'clock. Then my wife, you know, say I go to work. Me, I get for picking. I got for picking. I pay school fees, 25 million. All of the floor prices have increased. You, you know, initially you leave, drop, chop money of seven city, fifty Seven city, I give my but wife. But now you're going to reduce them. I have to increase them. He put a petrol for almost 25, uh, 25 cities. Why did they do that? Rollins, so, now, so, now, so, now, so, now, so now the chop money, so now the chop money will reduce, right? The chop money will go see cities. It will go see cities. Don't you think they will suffer? You go suffer? You go to buy a gallon longer back home, then me, I go, I go put a gallon for house. Sugar, my drink back home. Well, this time the petrol is very, very, uh, cost, it's very expensive. So if you take your car come to the job, nothing, you can't get even dropping. We are picking dropping. Even first class, the, petrol, the short distance with five city. Now, you increase the petrol. Now, before the people come again, they say they are giving you four cities. Call of the Uber 2. The Uber are taking lowest price. So if you not pick it, that's four cities. Someone will pick it. Now make you drivers are very stranded. No work. We are just here just come to see, come and pack our cars here and chat and go home. Mm. Half children, about four. But now school fees, I can't pay school fees because the job has collapsed. Interesting reports there from commercial drivers who say that the situation is really, really serious regarding the hike in fuel prices. They're calling for immediate resolution to this matter. But I got in touch with the managing director of Engine Ghana Limited, who's also the former board chairman of the OMC's Henry Akwabwa. He's been explaining to me all that we need to know about how we got here and the replications in the future. It's, it's a very difficult situation we face now. Um, but, but what can we do? What can we do? I mean, there's little we can do. Mm. You know, uh, competition. You cannot be on a certain price. You cannot, your business will not be sustainable. You're going to post losses, and I mean, that is not what you are in business to do. Mm. So, um, uh, I mean, it's a very difficult situation. Um, there's little we can do. So, so, so you feel we're currently in a stalemate, if you could use that term. There's no way around the whole thing. We're kind of, we're, we're kind of locked up in a box. Well, if, if you look at the price build-up, again, there are, there are levies and taxes built in there. And that is within the control of the government. So if 
there should there will be a consideration to now review some of these levies and taxes downwards then that will some way somehow cushion the the public and also you know, uh, give us some kind of level playing field. It's, it's, it's a very difficult situation that needs a broader, uh, a broader view. I mean, uh, all the stakeholders need to get around the table and decide whether we really want to continue with the deregulation policy, which again I've said has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages. Several advantages, but the disadvantages we need to see how we deal with them as and when they arise. The submission by Henry Akwabwa, the managing director of Engine Ghana Limited, is very critical as he stated in clear terms that there is no quick fixes to the situation regarding the pricing at the various pumps. According to him, we're currently in the fix. And it's going to be a very difficult a situation that needs immediate government intervention if critical situations regarding the city is not targeted. For Joy Business, I'm Charles Aita reporting. Let's still stay on issues regarding fuel prices and we connect via Skype to an energy expert, Kojo Puku, uh, for his thoughts on this whole development. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. All right, good evening and good evening, good evening to your listeners. Mm. First of all, what do you think of the deregulation policy? Do you think that it's been effective in dealing with price hikes in recent times? Yeah, very well. It's the only way to go. Government has no business subsidizing for products. Um, when we see a country like Ghana, mm. where in the past the problem we have now has been a result of subsidies, which has led to the energy sector, sector debt. We need to move away from that scenario mm. and have a scenario where, look, people are talking about an increase of prices at five cities per liter. Five cities per liter, the increase has only been like 24 pesos. Yes, it's going to affect people's pockets because when petrol goes up, there is like a dominoes effect. But mm. what you tend to look at is that, imagine government was to come in and say that we are going to subsidize, subsidize. It will now create a much bigger debt for the government. What Ghanaians should know is that this is a temporary situation. It won't last probably for six weeks and it will come back down. Because you know about the typhoon and the hurricane season. If you go and check your history, it's the same thing happened last year. So the price of crude oil is going to come up in the next six weeks. And government is also looking at getting some syndicated loans to the poor. Mm. And I think that will also go down. So oh. these prices will probably come back down again. I see. So clearly you're not in support of government subsidizing the prices of fuel. But moving on, um, some have argued that the two weeks price review window, it's not too appropriate. What do you think about that? Well, why not? People are refreshing. When I say refreshing, they're buying new ones to replace old stock on the weekly basis. So there's nothing wrong with the two weeks window. Mm. What we should be careful is that now that the price is up, that everybody's talking about, when it comes down, you should now decrease it, decrease it accordingly. That has been the issue. Mostly when the prices go up, they are quick to adjust it. But when it comes down, they are not able to do that. It's because of uh, regulation issues or it's just no, it's not, not proper monitoring of the system? Well, the petroleum pumps, there are what you call the indicative prices. Mm. Uh, MPE set the, set the indicative prices, and on the indicative prices, you realize that they are giving them the range within which they can charge. Mm. They would adhere to that. But what I'm saying is that the truck or the taxi who are complaining that prices should go up, when the prices of the pump goes down, realize that they don't do the same. Exactly. Okay, and, and, and that's been a problem. Mm. Look, taxi drivers are complaining. I bear their pain, but we live in this country where everybody you interview is complaining about Uber. Uber is able to charge much cheaper than what the taxes are charging. Mm. So it means that it's not necessarily about the, the fuel. Now they have competition, they are telling you, well, they have to take five cities, if not, somebody will take it. Exactly. It means that 
they can charge lesser. Mm. Yes, I admit that the price is going up, but it doesn't translate directly to uh, taxes going Taxi fares going up. Okay, moving on. Um, government is trying to introduce a unique exchange rate formula at the ports uh, so that it can actually reduce so that when prices or the dollar is affecting the CD, it can be stable there. Do you think that it's about time we have such an arrangement for the downstream oil sector? Um, look, that's perspective. <laughs> what government should concentrate on doing is making sure it has policies that the dollar to the city will be very low. Doing a special arrangement at the port is like putting a whipped cream on a cake. It doesn't solve the problem. We need proper fundamental. Mm -hmm. This government is having a tough time because it inherited a very bad economy. Are they doing their best? Yes. Can they do more? Yes. Mm -hmm. But the point is, we don't need cosmetics. We need long-term solutions. Banning certain quotation. But there's too many things that reported in the country that we don't need. Mm. Okay, so government should go to the root cause mm. and solve the problem, okay. not uh, cosmetics. All right. Well, so we, with recent developments in the world market, is it going to compound the situation in the short term? Yes. In, I, I give like a four to six weeks ago. Um, the hurricane season and the typhoon season is causing out of refineries yeah. and oil platforms to shut down. It will take like six weeks for the price to stay flat, and then the price will start to down. So, so what is the way down. forward? What's the way forward? Well, the way forward is to brace ourselves for the difficult time. I don't support governments reducing tariffs, reducing taxes, because it's a chicken and egg situation. Mm. You reduce the taxes, it reduces your revenue, the city weakens, and it comes back to hit you. So government needs the revenue to be able to show up the city so the city is strengthened so that the, 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 the exchange rate will come down. All right. Thank you very much. We've been speaking to an energy expert and he's Kojo Pok, who has been um, talking about this um, oil prices and what we can do to be able to solve the problem. Let's move on to other stories now. An automobile manufacturing firm, Nissan, is to, soon to establish an assembling plant in Ghana. This comes after another car maker, VW, um, hinted of um, establishing an assembling plant in Ghana. Minister of Trade and Industry Alan Tremantin disclosed the news at this year's industrial summit and exhibition held here in Accra. Nissan is a third foreign automobile company expected to establish an assembling plant in the country. Sinotrack and VW have both signed a memorandum of understanding with government of Ghana to establish their plant right here in the country. As part of the industrial development agenda, government says it has identified the automobile sector as pivotal to moving Ghana beyond aid. Nissan's entrance is expected to be a big boost for the industry due to its market share. Speaking at the ongoing Ghana Industrial Summit and Exhibition in Accra, Minister of Trade and Industry Alan Tremantin disclosed government is close to finalizing agreements with the Japanese automobile giant Nissan. We are also now looking at automobile uh, and vehicle assembly. When I identified this as one of our new strategic growth areas, people were saying, oh, there goes Alan again. He's talking big. How can you be thinking about producing cars? Uh, you are too late uh, in, in, in the industry. Just by signaling to the whole world that government is ready to support the development of this sector, you've seen what is happening. Major companies, basically more or less even putting more pressure on us to get started and we announced about um, the uh, or the vw nissan is also uh, very far advanced in terms of our discussions uh, when i was in Russia, uh, china with the president um, just last week sino truck um, is ready uh, to start intensive negotiations so, please, these are all opportunities for you in the private sector to engage with potential foreign. Because our interest is to make sure that these foreign companies actually find local partners. And that's how you grow your uh, local private sector. 
president of AGI, Dr. Yahweh Dujenfi, called on government to develop a national strategy for raw materials to feed the companies to be created out of the One District, One Factory initiative. We had an industrial policy whose development started in the previous MPP government and completed in the NDC regime. We need to revisit this policy and incorporate the new initiatives that this government has put in place. For instance, there is a national strategy to ensure that we grow raw materials to feed the factories this one district, one factory. One district, one factory will not succeed without the raw materials to feed these factories. How is this linked to the strategic activities of Ministry of Food and Agriculture? Where is the national strategy for creating market for the products that will be made from these factories under the one district, one factory? The summit under the theme International Partnerships for Value-Added Industrial and Local Content Development is an annual event organized by the Association of Ghana Industries, AGI. Ebenezer Sabutis report for Joy Business. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia says government is working on the implementation of a new exchange rate formula at the ports. This new formula is expected to prevent frequent volatility of the CD depreciation. The issues though that has come up because we are really, uh, this is work in progress, so whatever we are doing at the ports, we are reviewing very uh, regularly uh, to see where are the issues, what are people complaining about, you know, what can we do to make things better for people. One of the areas that we've received uh, at the economic management team, for example, complaints about is the regularity in the changes in the exchange rate every Monday at the port. And that, for a lot of importers, is a bit destabilizing because you may import your good and the exchange rate is A, and, and by the time it arrives, it's A plus A plus something. And then you, you, your, your calculation of the duty that you should have paid suddenly changes, and it can be a bit destabilizing. When we look at this, we think that's actually a, 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 you know, something we have to address. It's not something that makes sense uh, when you look at what we need to do in terms of predictability. Uh, because business works well in predictable environments. So our proposal is that instead of doing these Monday changes in the exchange rate at the port, we should look at it every six months, or every three months, and you can then have more predictability. Uh, and, and so we, 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 we are discussing this and we should implement this in, within the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, so that we can we can have something, but we keep looking for improvements to make to reduce uh, and, uh, the cost of doing business and to increase predictability. All right, so time to wrap up on business life tonight. But trust me, the reactions and then analysis on the fuel prices will certainly continue in our subsequent bulletins. But for more news, do log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Sandra Isenamafenu. Thanks so much for watching and have a great evening.